Hi, my name is Seb and welcome to The Prototype, a channel where I explore how to take ideas through to working prototypes. In this episode, we're going to track the curiosity of my latest project, a sports tech device that can be used for judging professional athletes. We're going to go through the risky assumptions, develop a hypothesis, and then build a prototype to test it. Let's get started. Thank you so much for watching, it means a lot to me. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So the idea of tracking things really interests me. And I had this idea of tracking the movement of a surfboard or kiteboard or snowboard as it moves in real time. I wanna see if you could track how a kiteboard jumps up into the air or a surfboard comes down and carves through the waves. I wanna see if this was an interest to anyone. Now, I'm only an amateur kiteboarder myself, so I needed to talk to someone who was representative of the community. I needed an expert. You just solved the problem, by the way. Wait a moment. Who is this guy? So my name is Matt Meyerson. I run RPRT Management. We are an action sports athlete management firm. And also I consult on a variety of tech and consumer startups. Okay. So in your opinion, why is this a problem worth solving? Because in judging and surfing, and this we talked about this, yeah. Oftentimes it's arbitrary. So they'll say, you know, this guy gets a 5.4 on this wave and then someone will do a similar wave and they'll say he gets a 5.6 because he was more vertical. This is a way to tell in, in scientific terms who is more vertical on the wave. Where I see this being useful, to be honest with you, is just trying to help bring more robustness to WSL live broadcast for people that don't know, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like NFL or, or NBA or Major League Baseball. They bring in all these graphics and weird. I'm wondering how this, how interesting this would be to WSL uh, or somebody that does training like Red Bull. Red Bull does a lot of training with their athletes because this could possibly also work with the skateboard. So my client, Keegan, who's going to be representing Team Australia for the Olympics, he's practicing 540s, right? Because we're dealing with Red Bull right now, trying to figure out ways to help him try and get a better, you know, result during the Olympics. And maybe this is a tool that can be used by them that we could uh, license to them per se um, between now and Olympics, if you could perfect it as something that they can use as a value add to their athletes. Now snowboarding, so that's also something. So my client, Lindsay, she's racing right now. She just got back from Europe. Um, she's a snowboard cross racer. Awesome. You know, which is kind of like uh, BMX racing, jumps and turns and something like this could be interesting for her. Um, and I, the, the nice thing is I could probably get people to test this. You know what I mean? Uh, pretty easily. Uh, for surfing, I have my client Tia or Keala. I could have Keegan for skateboarding, Lindsay for snowboarding, just to see what kind of data and if those data points are useful, right? And if they're exactly. different, different from, say, a Garmin or some other company that's putting other items. What I like about this is very simple. It's small. It can be packaged very small. Um, yeah, really neat. Really cool. So <laughs> when are you going to, when do you think you're going to um, be able to test? All right, before I jump into testing, I've got a few assumptions to work through. The first assumption is, will the surfing community actually adopt this kind of technology or could it be seen as a distraction from the purity of the sport? Secondly, can I actually build an electronic device that can track and get me the data I actually want? Thirdly, can I build a waterproof enclosure to house these electronics? And then finally, can I extract data in a meaningful way that will provide value to the judging community? 
To test the first assumption, I jumped online and headed to a few surfing forums. As you can imagine by the internet, I got some pretty wide and varied responses. Some people said they'd absolutely love the idea, others said they absolutely hate it, some said they would really enhance their surfing outings, others said it would just destroy what they would do and they would never buy this. So if this was a real startup, I'd spend a lot more time here in this validation phase talking to more members of the community. But as it stands, this channel is all about taking ideas through the prototype. It's not a startup. So what I want to do now, I think I've got enough to be able to go forward and build my first prototype. I've never made anything to be fully submerged underwater. So before I get started on electronics, I think it's important for me to validate the assumption I can make a waterproof enclosure. The last thing I want is for the electronics and the batteries to be consumed by salt water. I already have a fairly good idea of what these electronics are going to be, so I can make some assumptions on how big the circuit board is going to be, so I can start testing the case design. I really want to see how a case and a seal works in the real world. Before I get started on the design, some words from my expert. So as small as possible, yeah. um, and including the case and whatever, and I would say removable is very important. Building a waterproof case should be fairly straightforward. I jump to my iPad and sketch out a rough drawing of what it could look like. I find it's much easier having a quick paper draft before jumping into CAD as it forces you to think about all the dimensions and constraints. O-rings come in common sizes, so now it's down to picking one. You heard Matt, this needs to be small. I chose a 44mm diameter, 1.5mm cross-section O-ring, basically because I had them on hand. I measure any hardware with my calipers just to make sure I get it exactly right. Okay. Finishing up, I uh, refine the internal cavity again, chamfer the edges, make sure I've got enough space for the battery and the PCB. With the CAD, basically it's going through the same process, but now I'm making sure I have everything exact. With the PCB, I make sure I have enough space to recess in the cavity so the top of the forward sits flush with the surface of the case. The top will press down and hold this together nicely. Finally, putting together the top of the case using the same sketch at the bottom so they match up the right size. I use the dimensions of the O-ring to carve out a cavity and finish everything up by chamfering the edges and reducing the height as much as possible so it looks a little nicer and doesn't take much space. Okay, so you can see how everything looks here in the final design. Next step for me is to take this, export it to my 3D printer and print my first prototype. Okay, now to test how waterproof it is. I have a tall vase available which I can fill that gives me about a one meter column of water. That should be enough for my first test. I fill the device full of salt and drop it in. The salt means that if there's any water ingress, it will dissolve and give me a reliable indicator if my case was waterproof or not. Let's see how it went. Oh no. <laughs> well, that's obviously a leak. Okay, that's probably enough for this first episode. I hope it gives you a good understanding of the thing I'm trying to do here. In the next episode, we're going to work on the next major assumption. That is, I can build an electronic device that can give me the data that I need, that I can fit it inside the case, and we're going to build a working prototype to test this assumption. Every new episode in this series is going to focus on a new iteration of the prototype, the lessons learned, as well as seeing how the product evolves over time. I'm still learning and still new to all of this, so I would really love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions or questions, please pop them in the comments below. I can't wait to see where this product ends up, and I really hope that you can join me on this journey. Thanks for watching.